But I don't know if that's terrifying or what that is, because if life is everywhere, why is intelligent life not everywhere? Why, I mean, you've talked about that most likely alien civilizations, if they are out there, they would likely be far ahead of us. The ones that would actually communicate with us. Yes. And that, um, again, one of those things that is both exciting and terrifying. You, you've mentioned that they're likely not to be of biological nature. Well, I think that that's important. Of course, again, it's a speculation, but uh, uh, in speculating about um, intelligent life, and I, I take the search seriously. In fact, I chair the uh, committee that the um, Russian American investor Yuri Milner supports, looking for um, intelligent life. He's putting ten million dollars a year into uh, better equipment and getting time on telescopes to do this. And so I think it's worthwhile, even though I I don't hold my breath for success. It's it's very exciting, but but that does lead me to wonder what might be detected. And um, uh, I think. Well, we don't know. We've got to be open minds about anything. We've no idea what it will be. <laughs> and so any anomalous objects or even some strange shiny objects in the solar system or anything, we've got to keep our eyes open for. But uh, I think um, if we ask what about a um, planet like the Earth where evolution had taken more of the same track, mm -hmm. then as you say, it wouldn't be synchronized. Um, if it uh, had lagged behind, then of course it would not have got to advanced life, uh, but it may have had a head start. It may have formed on a planet around an older star. Okay, But then let's ask what we would see. Um, it's taken nearly four billion years from the first life to us, and we've now got this technological civilization which uh, um, could make itself detectable um, to any alien life, uh, aliens out there. Um, but I think most people would say that this civilization of flesh and blood creatures in a collective civilization may not last more than a few hundred years more. I think that the dead people may, some people would say it, it, it will um, kill itself off. Um, but uh, I'm more optimistic and I would say that uh, um, what we're going to have in future is um, no longer the slow Darwinian selection, but we're going to have what I call secular intelligent design which will be um, uh, humans designing um, uh, their progeny to be better adapted to where they are. And uh, if they go to Mars or some, somewhere, they're badly adapted and they want to adapt a lot. Uh, and so uh, they will adapt. Um, but there may be some limits to what could be done with flesh and blood. And so they may become largely electronic, um, download their brains and have and be electronic entities. And if they're electronic, then what's important is that they're near immortal. And also, they won't necessarily want to be on a planet with an atmosphere or gravity. They may go off into the blue yonder. And they and if they're near immortal, they won't be daunted by interstellar travel taking a long time. And so, um, uh, if if we looked at what would happen on the earth in the next millions of years, then there may be these electronic entities which have been sent out and are now far away from the earth, but still sort of burping away in some, in some fashion to be detected. Um, and so uh, this, um, this therefore leads me to think that um, if there was another planet which had evolved like the earth and was ahead of us, uh, it wouldn't be synchronized so we wouldn't see a flesh and blood civilization but we would see these electronic progeny as it were um, and, and then this raises another question because um, there's the famous argument against there being um, uh, lots of aliens out there which is that they would um, come and invade us and eat us or something like that you know that's a common idea uh, which sort of Fermi is attributed to have been the first to say um, and I think there's a um, escape clause to that because these um, entities yeah. would be, I uh, say, that they evolved by secular intelligent design, designed by their predecessors and then designed by us. Um, and uh, um, whereas Darwinian selection requires two things it requires aggression and intelligence. This 
future intelligence design um, uh, may favor intelligence because that's what they were designed for, but it may not favor aggression. And so these future entities, they, they may be um, sitting deep thoughts, thinking deep thoughts, um, and uh, not being at all expansionist. So they could be out there. Yeah. Um, and we can't refute their existence in the way the Fermi paradox is supposed to re refute their existence because um, these would not be aggressive or expansionist. Well, maybe evolution requires competition, not aggression. And I wonder if competition can take forms that are non-expansionary. So you can still have fun competing yeah, yeah. in the space of ideas which maybe primarily they'd all be philosophers, perhaps. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> in in a way, right? It's a it's an intellectual exercise versus a sort of violent exercise. 